Our world is a world of water. The oceans cover 71% of the surface of the Earth and provide us with the oxygen we need for every two breaths we take. It may be the case that much of the marine life we see today is lost to history. And as the seas continue to change, we may find that much of the life around us can only ever be seen through a screen. Hi, it's Emily from Bite Size Vegan, and welcome to another vegan nugget. The health of our oceans is absolutely vital to all life on this planet, including those of us on land. In fact, the oceans are the only reason our planet even has life. Earth's first breath of oxygen came from cyanobacteria over 2.7 billion years ago. But now, the oceans are facing total destruction from the very beings they brought to life humans. The collapse of our oceans will spell disaster for all life on this planet. As marine life conservationist Captain Paul Watson of Sea Shepherd says, if the oceans die, we all die. Humans have fished the oceans for thousands of years, but with the rise of commercial fishing methods, pollution runoff, and habitat destruction, marine animal populations are no longer able to replenish themselves fast enough. This video is going to look into the vital question, is our ocean running out of fish? And if so, what is the implication for life on this planet? This issue is incredibly complex, and we will barely be touching the surface. To understand the depletion of marine life from our oceans, we must address the main causes, overfishing, ocean dead zones, pollution, and habitat destruction. We're also going to look into what the main source of this oceanic destruction is and why it's rarely or never discussed by those individuals and organizations dedicated to protecting the oceans and their inhabitants. Let's start with the most obvious and oft discussed reason, overfishing. 90 to 100 million tons of fish are pulled from our oceans each year, with some sources even estimating 150 million tons. From the 1950s to 2011, worldwide catches increased fivefold, while the amount of fish in the sea was reduced by a half. Three quarters of the world's fisheries are exploited or depleted, and some scientists predict that we'll see fishless oceans by 2048. According to the most current report in 2014 from the Food and Agricultural Organization of the United Nations, the world's marine fisheries have expanded continuously to a production peak of 86.4 million tons in 1996, but have since exhibited a general declining trend. However, a more recent study published in 2016 challenges these statistics, finding gross underreporting of catches as well as issues with the FAO's data entry methods leading to underrepresentation. The study's creators, Daniel Pauly and Dirk Zeller, suggest that catch actually peaked at 130 million tons, rather than the FAO's 86.4 million, and has been declining much more strongly since. Their reconstruction of total catches showed a decline of over three times that of the reported data as presented by the FAO. With 60% of West Africa's and a staggering 92% of China's industrial fishing remaining unreported, even this corrected figure may not capture the full magnitude of commercial fishing. Statistics on ocean life in general remain cloudy, both due to the practical difficulties of tracking marine life and the terminology used by the tracking organizations. In their 2012 State of the World Fisheries and Aquaculture Report, the FAO found that 87.3% of fish stocks were fully exploited or overexploited. However, comparing this figure to the reports before and after is no easy feat. Between their 2010 and 2012 reports, the FAO had reduced its level of exploitation terminology from six to three categories. Now, in the most recent report from 2014, they've further clouded the issue, replacing exploited with fished and introducing two vague categories termed sustainable and unsustainable levels. 
This terminology has the dual effect of both making the situation sound less dire and making the comparison between reports unnecessarily difficult. But when you pick through the data and unravel the terminology, the upward trend of fish stock depletion becomes clear. The bottom line is that as of the most current report from 2014 using 2011 data, less than 10% of our world's fisheries remain unexploited. It's not just the amount of fish being taken from the ocean for food that is the issue. Far more devastating are those non-target species unintentionally captured, termed bycatch, or more accurately, by kill. According to the FAO, for every one pound of fish caught, up to five pounds of unintended marine species are caught and discarded as bykill. Though figures can be as high as 20 pounds of untargeted species for every pound of targeted animals killed. A report that came out just a few weeks before this video found that in select U.S. fisheries alone, bycatch in 2013 totaled approximately 689.1 million pounds. All of the industrial fishing methods used around the world come with the high cost of bycatch. One study analyzed bycatch solely from pelagic longline fishing in the Pacific Ocean. Longlining is a method which uses a main fishing line up to 100 kilometers in length, with secondary lines branching off of it, each set with hundreds of thousands of barbed baited hooks. The study found that 4.4 million non-targeted marine animals are killed as bycatch due to pelagic longline fishing in the Pacific Ocean every year, including on average 3.3 million sharks, 1 million marlins, 59,000 sea turtles, close to 77,000 albatrosses, and almost 20,000 dolphins and whales. Trawling, the primary method used for shrimp, is often referred to as the ocean equivalent of clear-cutting rainforest, with 80 to 98 percent of unintended catches being thrown back into the sea, dead. It's estimated that 650,000 marine mammals, including whales, dolphins, and seals, are killed or seriously injured every year by commercial fisheries outside the United States. Because of this, almost every foreign fish product sold in the United States enters the U.S. market in violation of federal law, namely the Marine Mammal Protection Act, which has remained pitifully unenforced for over 40 years. With 90% of all seafood consumed in the United States coming from foreign sources, this means that the American seafood industry has a large hand in devastating marine mammal populations while grossly violating its own federal law. The mechanical method used for fishing isn't the only issue. There's also the method of species targeting. Humans tend to go after the biggest fish first until they are no longer available. Then they move on down the chain, a process marine biologist Daniel Pauly termed fishing down marine food webs. The removal of apex predators leads to what's called trophic downgrading, where the loss of predators allows other species to grow unimpeded, upsetting the entire ecosystem. One study suggests that the removal of sharks may contribute to climate change by leaving the unchecked numbers of species to feast on the ocean's vegetation, releasing the ancient carbon found there in massive quantities. Dr. Peter McCready, one of the study's authors, cautioned that if we just lose 1% of the ocean's blue carbon ecosystems, it would be equivalent to releasing 460 million tons of carbon annually, which is about the equivalent of about 97 million cars. It's about equivalent to Australia's annual greenhouse gas emissions. With 73 million sharks killed every year for the shark fin industry, and 40 to 50 million sharks dying every year as bykill, not to mention the impact of shark culls, the ocean's most vital predators are under attack, and the repercussions of their decimation will affect us all. Not only do fishers move from species to species, but they will also move from area to area, decimating one before moving on to the next. For example, 33% of the European Union's seafood comes from developing nations. While overfishing is certainly the most obvious drain on the world's fish and the most talked about, it is by no means the only cause. Ocean dead zones are a huge threat to marine life. Dead zones, or hypoxic zones, are areas of the ocean where there has been such a reduction in oxygen that animal life suffocates and dies. While ocean protection organizations will mention dead zones, they by and large ignore their number one cause. 
animal agriculture. Animal agriculture is the leading cause of not only ocean dead zones, but also species extinction, water pollution, and habitat destruction, all of which severely impact our oceans. In the documentary Cowspiracy, The Sustainability Secret, Dr. Richard Openlander discusses the immense impact of land-based animal agriculture on our oceans. Livestock operations on land has caused or created more than 500 nitrogen flooded dead zones around the world in our oceans, comprise more than 95,000 square miles of areas completely devoid of life. So any meaningful discussion about the state of our oceans has to always begin by frank discussions about land-based animal agriculture, which is not what our conservation groups, Oceana being the largest one in the world right now, uh, the most influential, as well as others, that's not what is at the apex of their discussions. In addition to not acknowledging the main cause of water pollution, habitat destruction, species extinction, and ocean dead zones, Oceana and other major ocean defense organizations propose that the solution to the decimation of ocean life is to eat sustainable seafood. Unfortunately, there is no such thing as sustainable seafood. With whales dying from starvation and 90% of all large fish species gone, the ocean can't even sustain itself, let alone the up to 150 million tons of sea life we pull from it every year. Additionally, sustainable seafood labels do not account for the greenhouse gas emissions caused by fishing. The 2013 State of the Ocean report stated, not only are we already experiencing severe declines in many species to the point of commercial extinction in some cases, and an unparalleled rate of regional extinctions of habitat types, we now face losing marine species and entire marine ecosystems, such as coral reefs, within a single generation. Unless action is taken now, the consequences of our activities are at a high risk of causing, through the combined effects of climate change, over-exploitation, pollution, and habitat loss, the next globally significant extinction event in the ocean. It's clear that wild fish and marine animals are in danger. So what about farming fish? Isn't that the ideal solution? Wouldn't it reduce the amount of fish we're taking from the sea? Sadly, the opposite is true. When fish farms or aquaculture took off in the 1950s, the number of wild-caught fish also rose dramatically. From 1950 to 2001, fish farming increased 38-fold, from 1 million tons to 38 million tons. Fish farms actually increase the number of wild fish caught because farmed carnivorous species require large inputs of wild fish for feed. Aquaculture systems also modify and destroy wild fish habitats, pollute the water with waste disposal, introduce exotic species, and are breeding grounds for pathogens and pests. Today, the majority of wild-caught fish go to feed our farmed fish, as well as our pigs, cows, and chickens. In an extremely thorough and mathematically challenging article, Harish Sethu of CountingAnimals.com deduced that the United States alone uses more than 5.6 billion pounds of wild-caught fish to feed the animals we eat, with between 144 and 293 wild sea animals killed annually to feed the farmed fish and shrimp eaten by the average American consumer. By the best estimate allowed with the hindrance of the FAO's underreporting and impersonal quantifying of sea life by the ton and not the individual, every year we kill over 2.8 trillion fish. That's 2.7 trillion more every year than the number of humans to have ever existed in the history of our species. If fishing is so unsustainable, why is it continuing at a frenzied pace? Well, it's no surprise that a huge motivator is money. A 2010 study found that global fishery subsidies for 2003 are between 25 and $29 billion. These results imply that the global community is paying the fishing industry billions each year to continue fishing, even when it would not be profitable otherwise. Effectively funding the over-exploitation of marine resources. Now, all that we've covered in this video has not even touched on the ethical side of fishing. You can see my video on whether fish feel pain to look into that aspect. The bottom line is that there is no way 
to fish sustainably. Our oceans, our earth, and we ourselves are facing a massive extinction. We have already gone beyond the point of being able to reverse the damage. As Dr. Openlander states, it has been 300 million years since the last time our oceans have been this warm and acidic, and at that time, it took over 30 million years to recover. We have to stop fishing, and we have to call for the organizations charged with the duty of protecting our oceans to actually protect them not have an active hand in their destruction by peddling a myth of sustainability. So what can you do to help? Stop eating seafood and educate others. Send them this video and or the blog post with all of the scientific backing via careful citations. Dig into those resources if you doubt these claims, but make a change. If the oceans die, we all die. This video report and the accompanying article took approximately 159 hours to produce. If you'd like to help support the creation of more free, scientifically backed educational videos, see the support link here in the sidebar and below, and join us in the Nugget Army on Patreon. A special thanks to my $50 and above patrons and my entire Patreon family for making this video and all my videos possible. You have my undying gratitude. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and share it with friends, family, and organizations to educate and inspire action. At this point, we are the only hope for the ocean, and the ocean is our only hope for survival.